with nearly 25 years behind us, many generations have actually grown up with Java. But for technology to endure the test of time, it needs to remain attractive to future generations. We're investing today so Java can remain vibrant for another 25 years and more. And we can all encourage a new generation of developers to discover Java. My next guest is a great example. She has a young adult novel coming out next week where Java plays a key part. Please help me welcome Amy Lucido. Okay, Amy, why don't you tell us about your book? Yeah, so my book is called Emmy and the Key of Code, and it's a story about a 12-year-old girl named Emmy who comes from a family of musicians. Her mom's an opera singer, her dad's a pianist, but she feels like she's not actually good at music. Um, so when she moves to San Francisco for her dad's job, she decides, I'm not taking music classes anymore, and she ends up taking a computer science class. What she doesn't expect is to fall in love with coding, and not only to fall in love with it, but to rediscover music through it. But what I think makes the book special is that it's a novel in verse, which means it's a novel, like a single story, but it's told in verse, so poetry. And as she learns to code, she starts to incorporate the if statements and while loops of Java into the poetry. So poetry becomes sort of a literary device, but also the idea is a kid would read it for the story and accidentally learn a little bit of Java at the same time. <laughs> okay, so you could have chosen anything. Uh, why did you choose Java? So first and foremost, I'm a Java developer. I've been working in Java at every company I've worked at, Uber, Google, Facebook. Um, but even more than that, Java was the language that I learned to code in. Um, I was a junior in high school taking AP Computer Science. And um, I'll never forget this. I had a computer science teacher for the very first day of class. He, um, you know, we, we were making our first Hello World program. And obviously, the thing that every new Java developer has to do when they make a program is type public static void main string bracket bracket args. And as a student, obviously, I had no idea what this meant. And my teacher anticipated this. Um, and he said, you know, you're not going to know what this means, so just memorize it like a song. And so he wrapped it. He goes, public static void main string <laughs> bracket bracket args. And that stuck with me. Like, I still remember this is, you know, a decade ago. Um, and so when I started writing this book about a girl learning how to code, you know, how, especially incorporating the music aspect of it, how could I not write it in Java? Okay, so uh, I, I imagine that like me, a lot of folks out there are wondering how they can get a hold of a copy. Well, that is a great question. Um, it is available wherever books are sold, so Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, all the above, um, your local library or local independent bookstore. Um, but as an author, independent bookstores are our lifeblood. Um, particularly for those of you who live in San Francisco, there's one in particular that I am partnering with throughout this whole process. It's called The Booksmith, and it's up in in The Hate, um, and I'm doing a launch party there next week on September 24th with my publisher who's, for any of you who have children at home, you might recognize the name Kwame Alexander. He wrote a book called The Crossover, which is a very famous uh, novel and verse for children. Um, and so he's actually coming on Tuesday to interview me at the Booksmith. And so if you buy a book, not only do you get, can you come to the launch party, um, but also, you, or if you're not, you know, if you're not local, um, we can ship it to you and I'll sign it, which you can't get through Amazon. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, we've tried to make the QR codes large, so you can just take out your phone and go directly there and pre-order.